continuing with the basic function properties of linear transformations, we move from the one-to-one -one property to the onto property. As we noted before, when we have the property of linearity, it's going to be a lot easier to test for our properties than without. Now, let's recall our setup. T is a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. We'll have an associated matrix A that will have m rows and n columns, so note they're reversed. The recipe for A, if I want the ith column of A, we take our linear transformation and apply it to the ith standard basis vector. So this vector is going to have all zeros except for a 1 in the ith row. Then if we apply t to the vector u in Rn, that's the same as the matrix vector product of A and u. Now, we recall the definition of on two. So if I have a map T between two spaces, we'll call it on two. If for any Y in the range space, there exists some X in our domain space such that T of X is equal to Y. So the idea here for on two, we're hitting every point in our range space. So picture looks something like this. So I draw it like this just to suggest that we're hitting everything over on this side. So something that wouldn't be onto would be mapping into some proper subset of our range space. Now, when T is a linear transformation, we have a straightforward rule for onto as we had when we were talking about one-to-one. -one. So T is onto, that's the same as saying that the range of t is equal to rm. But since we have a linear transformation, we know that the range of t is equal to the column span of our A matrix. So t is on to, if and only if, the column span of the A matrix is all of rm. In practice, we check that by putting A into row echelon form and then checking that there's a pivot in each row. So if so, then t is on to. Now, to get a feel for what's going on here, if t is on to, we're trying to find a solution to the equation t on u equal to v, where we can let v be any vector in Rm. So if I choose a v, then we're trying to solve the system of linear equations with augmented matrix A in the first part, v in the second part. So there are going to be two possibilities when I put a into row echelon form. If we get the last row equal to all zeros in the row echelon form, since I can let v be equal to anything, that means we can have zero equal to a non-zero number. So it's going to be inconsistent, which means we're not going to be able to solve that system of linear equations. So that's going to mean we can't be on to. In the other case, Okay, well, if I don't have a row of zeros in this last row in the row echelon form, then that's going to mean we have to have a pivot in each row. If there's a pivot in each row, we're always going to be able to solve the equation AU is equal to V, which means we're always going to have a consistent system of linear equations. For a concrete example, consider the linear transformation from before, from R2 to R2, we find the A matrix, then we go to row echelon form. So here I have a pivot in each row, so we're on to. If we draw the pictures, so we'll take this grid, map it over using our A matrix. We see here we're going to map the plane to the plane. We're going to hit every point in the R2 that's on the right hand side, so on to. Note, we saw before we had one-to-one. -one. Another example, take the linear transformation from R2 to R, given by sending xy to x plus y. Now, the A matrix here is already in row echelon form. I have a pivot in each row. So this is on to, okay, it's not one-to-one. -one. And if we take a look at the pictures, we're gonna send this grid over to the real line. So it hits every point in the space on the right. 
Finally, an example where we're not on to. So we used this transformation before, going from R2 to R2. We have the following A matrix, and when we go to row echelon form, we have only a pivot in the first row. So not on to. If we draw the picture, we're going to carry our grid to this line here. So we're not going to hit every point in the plane. To see not on to with computation. We'll show that T never hits the vector 1, 1 in our range space. We set up an augmented matrix. I put A here, we put V here, we row reduce. Then we see we have all zeros and then a minus 1. So the system of linear equations is inconsistent, which means there's no solution. That means there's no U in our domain, such that T of U is equal to 1, 1. So not on to. Now, as with the one-to-one -one property, we have an immediate rule for when t is not on to. So if I have a linear transformation from Rn to Rm, with m greater than n, that means our A matrix has more rows than columns. Its row echelon form can never have a pivot in each row, so it's never on to. For an example, let's consider the linear transformation t going from R2 to R3, given as follows. So if this were on to, then we would be trying to map a plane linearly onto all of our three. And intuitively, that's not going to happen. To see it concretely, we form our A matrix, we go to row echelon form, and then we see we don't have a pivot in each row, so it's not on to. For the picture, taking our plane, then we're just going to map it into R3 as a plane through the origin. So we're not going to hit every point in R3, so not on to. Finally, what happens if our linear transformation is one to one and on to? If we form the A matrix, go to row echelon form, we have a pivot in each column from one to one, a pivot in each row from on to. So that means our M is equal to N, and the reduced row echelon form is the identity matrix. Now, this is exactly the condition we want for the existence of an inverse function for T. Recall, when we have an inverse function for T, that's defined by saying if T of X is equal to Y, then T inverse of Y is equal to X. This is going to occupy some time in your linear algebra class.